<laughs> for today's class then I'm gonna use the foam roller for that prolonged passive stretch over the over um, for the hip flexors you can also use a block sometimes a block actually feels a bit more stable and if both of those things feel a little too big or a little too firm rolling up a blanket kind of like the one I'm sitting on is a nice option too and I think that's how I'd like to start today so we're gonna use that and then we'll also use the standard size therapy balls and I'll have my gorgeous ball and alpha ball to the side just in case too. Um, I sometimes like using the, um, the gorgeous ball as a support, but the foam roller could also be our support today as well. So let's start on our backs. Let's take your block or your foam roller or your folded up blanket right under the pelvis as we come into a bridge position to begin. So arrive in bridge, come into the sensation of your body, feel your feet on the floor, feel your shoulders, back of the arms, upper back. Just drop into the support of the earth. Take a moment to pause, sensing the body as you arrive. Reversing the effects of gravity. Reversing the effects of sitting. Letting go of anything that came before this. Letting go of anything that's waiting for you after this. And arriving into the present moment and all of the sensations. And as you arrive, maybe rocking the knees side to side feels nice to get a little massage of the sacrum, feeling the sacral border on one side, then the sacral border on the other. And then maybe do a few pelvic tilts, changing that direction, feeling the pelvis tip forward and tip back, feeling the pull that it has on the thighs. And then straightening one leg down, choosing whichever side feels right for you. Reaching through your heel, sensing the opening in the front of the belly, front of the hip, front of the thigh. Sending your awareness and your breath into the front of that lengthened hip. Allowing the pelvis to drop down into the foam. Letting time and gravity do the work. Nothing to do. 
simply letting gravity and position undo so much of what we do unintentionally to our bodies, allowing us to reverse the patterns so that we can restore movement, restore space, restore ease through the pelvis, hips, and low back. Take just a couple more feeling, sensing breaths here. Hands can even be on the body to sense the breath, fill the belly, fill the front of the hip. Using all of your tools, all of your senses to come more fully into your body in this moment. And then as you're ready, hug the bent knee into your chest, coming into even a little bit more stretch through the hip flexor and through the pelvis, moving the pelvis in opposite directions. Thanks everyone for joining if I missed you. When we began, today we'll be going through the psoas, a bit of the hips and the low back. So find your way into this nice pelvis and hip flexor stretch over the foam. Taking a few rounds of breath here. just arriving into your bodies. Choosing whichever side feels right for you to begin. And then take your hands that's on the lengthened side since I didn't tell you which side. So hands to opposite knee. So opposite hand to bent knee. And then the other arm out like a T. Start to use your hand to rock the knee over the body. Moving slowly so that you're not going all the way to the end range, but just bumping up into the outside. of the hip, getting a little bit of massage to the outer hip, so through the glutes and the gluteal borders as they attach to the ilium or the pelvic bone, and getting a gentle rock just to sense the edge of sensation, and then back off, rocking in and out. And then allowing yourself to come into that twist, trying to keep the opposite shoulder down, reaching through the heel of your straight leg, grounding that straight leg, and feeling the spinal twist as well as the compression to the outer hip. Pausing and breathing here for about five feeling breaths. Letting go of the need of doing.
resting in the sensations of the body where the body, floor, and prop meet. And resting in the sensations of the breath, feeling the breath flow into areas of sensation. Take one more full letting go breath. And then rotate back onto your back, hugging both knees into your chest. Feeling the spine drop heavy towards the floor. Feel the spine come back to midline. Feel that little bit of compression Soften any efforting, guarding, or holding in the spine. And how having the hips slightly elevated allows the spine through the mid-back, rib cage, the shoulder blades, drop more firmly into the support of the ground beneath you. Then slowly lower one knee to the floor, then the other knee to the floor. And let's begin again on the other side. So taking the opposite leg now and sliding it out, reaching through your heel, allowing the heel to stay connected to the floor. Use your hands as a guide, as a nurturing tool of observing the breath, Welcoming sensation, the hands can be on the belly or on the hips. Send your awareness to the front of the hip on the straightened leg. Letting go of efforting here. Letting gravity and time undo the flexed posture of sitting, protection. Softening the buttocks. Allowing the body to be heavy. Welcoming the assistance of gravity in this process. Using those external supports as tools, assistance for letting go to returning back into ourselves, regaining balance, space, and awareness. And as you're ready, hug the left knee in toward, or the opposite knee rather, towards the chest. For me, it's the left, but it could be either side for you. Keeping the extended leg Grounded by connecting the heel towards the floor. That connection or feedback from the floor will help you lengthen just a little bit more through the front of that extended hip. Feel the pelvis moving in opposite directions. So one knee driving up as the other knee is reaching down. Send a breath into the pelvis. Feel the opening and spaciousness in the pelvis, expanding the pelvic floor on the inhale, downward and outward. Create a sense, a feeling state of ease, of openness, of kindness as you explore this opening. Oftentimes, extension action like this can be a little forceful. So there can be that kind of reaction or instinct to kind of force yourself there. See if you can let go of that efforting and just allow yourself to be here. by simply allowing the body will start to soften and change and welcome new movement, new range, new mobility, 
No need to effort. And then now take your hand to opposite knee. So opposite hand to opposite knee. Other arm out like a T. And start to explore a little rotation. So first we're just going to rock into that edge of sensation. Rocking. And then returning to center. Exploring sensation in the outer hip. So through the glutes. Along the border of the pelvis. Bumping up into sensation, welcoming that sensation, like dipping your toes in the water, dip yourself in and then back off. And then after a few rounds of rocking, ease your way into a twisting position, keeping the shoulders down and rolling onto the outer hip. Pausing here for five to seven deep feeling breaths. Again, reconnect to the weight of your body, feeling the body sink into the floor, shoulders supported, foot supported, foam or block elevating the pelvis. Leaning into that support. Breathing into the places of sensation in your body. Pausing for a few more rounds of breath. And following the next exhale, return towards center, hugging both knees into the chest again. After that extension and rotation, helping and assisting the spine to come back to neutral by giving a little compression into the spine by hugging the knees, allowing the spine to drop back into the floor in midline. Returning to midline. Riding the wave of any sensation. And then beginning again, drop one knee down to the floor. Other foot down to the floor. And then one leg at a time, straighten both legs out. One, and then the other, allowing both hips now to extend. If there's any discomfort, any pinching, uh, irritation in the low back, you can keep the feet on the ground, knees slightly bent, or try repositioning that foam just a little bit. Find that just right spot so that you're pelvis and spine feel supported, allowing the hips to extend. And if it feels right, carry that extension up into the upper body, allowing the arms to come up overhead. Reaching through both feet and reaching through both arms. Create a nice crescent shape in the spine. Restoring hip extension, spinal extension. Uh, 
undoing the effects of sitting, computer work. rebalancing the body and the spine and then even add a little bit more length by reaching out through one heel and one hand finding length on one side returning to center and then inhaling reaching out through the other side making the body really long returning to center like you're climbing a rope or climbing a ladder, lengthen through one side and then lengthen through the other. And if this feels like too much with the foam behind you or the block behind you, go ahead, take the prop out and do it flat on your back, reaching through one side reaching through the other side taking maybe three more rounds on each side feeling the length and the openness in the front body and then coming into stillness just allowing the entire body to collapse, back body heavy, front body dropping into the back body, dropping into support for five more breaths. And then allowing the palms to come back down. Bend your knees. Gently lift your hips up off of the prop, removing the prop, and slowly lowering the hips down towards the earth. There may be some soreness after having the hips up for such a period of time. So breathe into that sensation. It might feel better to keep the knees bent for a couple moments. And then slowly lower one leg down and the other leg down, coming all the way onto your back. returning to stillness and beginning again we'll use the therapy balls now coming in just with one therapy ball right into the back of your hip i'm going to come to the edge of the sacrum so we were had nice support in that broad space along the back of the pelvis however we're going to get in a little bit more specifically a little deeper now by taking a single therapy ball, I'm going to come to the left side, right to the edge of the sacrum. And then I'm going to straighten that leg down. So I'm going to straighten my left leg and I'm actually going to bend my right. And first I'm going to allow myself to meet the sensation of where the ball and body meet. Welcoming that sensation, observing if there's any reaction creating tensing of the glutes or maybe even tensing of the hands or the face. Let go of any doing. 
allow yourself to soften into that sensation, meeting it just as it is. And then actually contract that buttocks right where the ball and body meet, holding it, squeezing it, engaging it for three, two, one, and then release, allowing your body to soften in just a little bit more. Let's do that two more times, squeezing the buttocks, engaging the gluteals right where the ball and body meet, increasing our awareness, our proprioception, maybe even increasing our ability to recruit those muscles, feeling more motor units or muscle fibers engaged this time. You may even dig your heel into the floor just the tiniest bit to assist turning on the glutes and then soften in. Finding that just right spot, maybe do a couple pelvic tilts to readjust and then one more round, engage the buttocks, press the heel down, Feel yourself almost begin to levitate off of the ball just a little. Holding for three, two, one, and then allowing yourself to drop down. And now let's turn the toes out to the side with the hip in external rotation. Draw the leg back up and then your knee to midline. Let's do a couple of those circles, letting the legs straighten down, sliding the heel down so that you're not lifting it up, turning the toes out, rotating just at the hip. Hands can monitor the pelvis, sliding the leg up and out to the side, and then coming back in. Freeing up now beneath the glutes are the hip rotators. Sliding the leg down, turning the toes out, externally rotating at the hip. Slide the leg up and then rolling back in. One more round just like that. Allow the leg to stay out to the side now. So let the knee fall out to the side. Soften the front of the hip. Often, so maybe even just try doing a couple in and out motions of the knee. So just a gentle knee falling out to the side. Being conscious not to tense or engage the front of the hip. So just going out as far as you can without a gripping in the front of the hip. Then when you let the knee fall out to the side, front hip relax, pelvis stable, squeeze the buttocks again here. Finding that activation in the end range to re-educate our body in this new range. Hold for three, two, one, and release. Allow that knee to drop just a little bit more. Do that one more time, contracting, Holding for three, squeezing two, one, and then let the knee fall down. Feeling that external rotation of the hip, feeling the therapy ball drop deep into the back of the hip. Allow your body to soften there. Then remove the therapy ball. Allow both legs to straighten for a moment, sensing the difference in the back of your hips now. The side that you just did, for me it was the left, feels flatter. It actually feels a bit deflated and a little wider. 
as a result of softening. So now we've just used the contraction and relaxing to allow the body to return to a resting state. And now we'll be able to go through that process of ramping up the contraction and then coming out of tension and relaxing a bit better. And we'll use that in a, in a couple moments when we turn onto our belly. So let's try the other side. Bend the left knee or um, the side that you, that you just did. And then take the ball to the opposite side, coming right to the edge of your sacrum. Maybe doing just a few gentle pelvic tilts to find that just right spot along the border of that triangular bone that makes up the back of the pelvis. Sensing into the edge of the pelvis. And then pressing your heel down on your straight leg with the ball underneath it. Press the heel down, squeeze the buttocks where the ball and body meet, engage the musculature in the back of the hip, holding seven, six, continue to contract, dial up the contraction, just engaging the gluteal area, feeling strong sensation, but not going into discomfort or pain for two, one, and then churn the volume of that contraction down, relaxing the buttocks into the ball. Sink your body now into the ball a little bit more. Repositioning if necessary. We'll do two more rounds of contraction here. Tr dialing up the contraction. Feel the gluteals engage the heel press down, the tightening of the back body, which presses the ball out a bit, holding that for five, four, three, two, one, and then dialing down, relaxing gently, turning off any tension and contraction in the buttocks, allowing you to sink over the therapy ball. We'll do that one more time. I'm going to do just a little pelvic tilt to find that just right spot for the therapy ball where it's sensational but sustainable. And then again, engaging the buttocks where ball and body meet, driving the heel down, feeling the musculature turn on, then turning on a few more motor units or muscle fibers ramping up that contraction, feeling the hip tense, so to push the ball out. Hold for three, two, one, and then slowly dialing down that contraction, releasing the buttocks, letting the whole back of the hip soften, ball sinking in. Integrating some mobility now, we'll do a little frog leg variation, turning the toes out to the side with the knee out to the side, sliding the leg up, bringing the knee back to midline, rotating over the ball, sliding the leg out, keeping your heel on the ground, rotate the foot out, drag the leg up in that rotation, and then internally rotate back to neutral, so knees pointing towards the sky. Maybe two more rounds, rotating down, turning the toes out, dragging the heel up with the knee out, pulling the knee back towards midline, straightening out. Nice, smooth movement, like you're moving through water. Make this the last round. Ha. Then explore that rotation by just letting the knee fall out 
and come back to center. See if you can do this without contracting the muscles in the front of the hip. So maybe taking your hand gently to the front hip bone. Letting gravity slowly pull your leg down. Not forcing it. You'll notice if you force the leg down, that's when you'll feel that contraction occur in the front of the hip. So really easing into that rotation. And when you get to the end range of that rotation, let's activate the buttocks again, pressing the ball away by contracting the buttocks. Maybe even pushing the knee out a little bit here, feeling the back of the hip engage. Holding for three, two, one, and then softening the leg down into just a little bit more external rotation. Finding that just right spot in the back of the hip, moving that ball at any time to find that just right place for you. And then go ahead, do that again. Engage the back of the hip, right where ball and body meet. See if you can dial up that contraction, get a few more muscle fibers to engage, feeling those muscles come back online. And then releasing. Two more rounds, contracting, feeling the tension ramp up, feeling all of those muscle fibers engage, telling the brain, I feel that contraction, holding it and then dialing down gently that contraction and letting go, turning it off completely. Make this the last time. On your own count, holding for about seven to 10 seconds. Holding three, two, one and release use your hand maybe to draw the knee back in remove your therapy ball and uh, allow your body to relax entirely onto the floor feeling the heaviness and the openness in the pelvis allow the glutes and back of the hips to soften entirely Notice how after contraction comes relaxation, comes ease and spaciousness. Take a full letting go breath here and then turn gently onto your bellies using as little energy as possible. Arrive onto your bellies. And here we'll do one more thing, integrating the hip extension and the glute activation. So we just engaged, we just stretched through the psoas and we just engaged, turned the glutes back online. So now I want to do one more integrating exercise. There's two ways you could do this. You can actually, maybe three ways. You can stay right on your belly, letting your head rest on your hands. But if you want a little bit more feedback, the options are taking your foam roller back under the hips. This will help keep the pelvis stable, keep you from coming into overextending the spine and let you isolate the glutes. Or if you want a little bit more direct, so as release, you can take that alpha ball into the front of the hip, right inside of that bony hip point, your ASIS. 
If you don't have the larger ball, we've, you, um, you can use a block with the smaller ball as well in that space. Or if you're wanting, if you're feeling, ah, oh, I might have a little bit more abdominal um, tension, maybe I have a little visceral, digestive, reproductive stuff going on, and you want a nice little visceral massage, because sometimes that anterior compartment tightness can contribute to tightness in our hip flexors, tightness in our hips, and um, play a role. So maybe I'm actually gonna go with this right now. That just made sounded really nice to me. So I'm gonna take the the gorgeous ball into my belly as I do this. This will actually add a little more instability. But I like using that extra prop. It gives us a two for one, and it also um, gives us more feedback. So whether you put your foam roller here, rolled up blanket here, the gorgeous ball, or you could go for the um, alpha ball in the front of the hip. Whatever you decide, lie onto your belly. Maybe doing a gentle rocking of the pelvis, using that gentle rocking motion just to ease in. And then sighing. Let go of any tension in the front body. And then do just a few pelvic tilts here. I want you to focus on that posterior pelvic tilt so that you're driving the pubic bone down. Whether, even if you don't have a prop here, think about pressing the pubic bone into the floor to stabilize the pelvis. And elongate the spine. And then keep that pelvis tucked. Curl the left toes under. The pelvic bone is tucking to stabilize the pelvis. So wherever you are, observe the spine. Keep the low back long and the spinal muscles relaxed. I want to, I want to keep the spine long so that we don't engage the spinal extensors, but instead we focus on reactivating the glutes. So, engage the quadriceps on the left by pressing into your heel and feeling your thigh engage. Now, point the toes, engaging the calf, and then lift those toes up just the tiniest bit, feeling the left buttocks turn on. Can you feel the left buttocks turn on without turning on the back? Keeping the back long, back relaxed, out of extension, just engage the butt. For three, two, one, and then release all the way down. <sighs> And then let's come to the opposite side. So that will come today towards a reciprocal pattern, which is necessary for walking. Curl the right toes under, press through the right heel, squeeze the right buttocks, point the right toes, lift those toes just a little bit, feeling the right glute fire without extending through the spine, keeping the low back long, Feel the entire back of the right leg activate for three, two, one, and then release all the way down. And then let's do two more times on each side. Curl the toes under, press through the heel, pointing the toes, feeling the entire back of the left leg engage right up to the buttocks. And then releasing, feeling that contraction followed by the relaxation. Right side now, pressing through the heels, pointing the toes, feeling the butt engage to just barely lift the toes a little bit more. Low back long. 
pelvis pressing down into the prop or into the floor. And then releasing. Maybe on this last round, let's engage that upper body kind of like we did on our backs over the foam. So as we reach through the left leg, reach the right arm long. Press through the heel. Point the toes. Lift the toes and the thumb. Feeling your body as long as possible from right fingertips to left toes. Holding for three. Keeping the shoulders long and relaxed. Two. One. And releasing all the way. Coming to the other side. Left arm reaches long. Curl the right toes under. Press through the toes. Lifting the toes. Lifting the fingertips. Reaching longer rather than reaching higher. So it's more about length than height. Feeling as much length as you can from left fingertips to right toes. Feeling the butt engage. Pelvis pressing down. Spine is long. And then releasing completely. Taking a full letting go breath, removing the props and lying all the way onto your belly. Feeling the whole front body, creases of the hips, tops of the thighs, pelvis and abdomen all drop into the floor. Feel the heaviness, the openness, and the spaciousness through the whole front body. Pausing here, letting that wave of sensation subside. Integrating the benefits of the practice. Stay here as long as you need to allow for a complete surrendering of the whole body into support. Letting go of any effort. Allowing for a moment of ease and rest. Welcoming the space. Welcoming the support. Remembering that this support is always with you. And pressing down into that support. Use the earth to bring you back up to sitting. Completing our class in a seated posture. Grateful for our practice and our bodies to experience all things. Thank you. Please let me know if you have any questions. I'm happy to answer.